the mics. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepare the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve thou my soul, for I am holy. My God, save thy servant that putteth his trust in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, in my prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble distress. In the time of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is not one that can do as thou doest. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. O knit my heart unto thee, that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will praise thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the congregations of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set before their eyes. But thou, O Lord God, art full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thine handmaid. Show some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast hope of me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 17th chapter of the first book of the Kings. Life sustained and regained by the unthinkable power of God. In those days, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. 
And the word of the Lord came unto him and said, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had not been rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zedon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times, and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child, and brought him down out of the chamber into the house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is truth. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. 
the Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the third verse of the third chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, a prayer to know and experience the unthinkable power of God through Christ's indwelling presence. Brethren, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the eleventh verse of the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. A widow's son is raised to life by the unthinkable power of God made present by Christ. At that time, Jesus went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, There was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier. And they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all of Judea and throughout all the region round about. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and and hath raised raised up a mighty salvation salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that that we we should should be saved saved from from our enemies enemies, and from from the the hand of all that that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, 
to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in in Jesus Jesus Christ, his His only Son, our Lord, Lord, who who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ, have have mercy mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but but deliver us from from evil. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And And grant grant us us thy thy salvation. salvation. O Lord, save the state. And And mercifully hear hear us when we call upon thee. Endear thy ministers with righteousness. And and make make thy thy chosen chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And And bless bless thine inheritance. inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is Thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we beseech Thee, let Thy continual pity cleanse and defend Thy Church. And because it cannot continue in safety without Thy succor, preserve it evermore by Thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, Thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling 
to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose loving hand hath given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor thee with our substance, and remembering the account which we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of thy bounty, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are anyways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. This we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril, Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And, and let, let light perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Welcome and good morning on this 16th Sunday after Trinity. Um, and... Uh, Lovely to have Father Hunt with us officiating. Um, it's a change, you know, even the clergy gets tired of the sound of their own voices once in a while. It's good to have someone else's voice. Um, you should have by now your stewardship cards, uh, or they're, you'll have them very shortly. They're in the mail. And I'd ask you, of course, to consider them carefully, uh, to consider the Bible's teaching about giving about the standard the Bible teaches of the tithe, about your church's need, uh, and about, above all, our own need to give. And then I'd ask you to make a pledge or estimate of giving for 2021 and to return the card. That, of course, helps the church uh, budget responsibly, but it also has the great benefit for each of us who's making that commitment of having a commitment to fulfill and to live up to. Uh, secondly, uh, I know, uh, understatement of the year, uh, we're all feeling rather disconnected from each other and from our church family. And uh, in the long, hot summer, there didn't seem to be a lot of alternatives. But now that temperatures are starting to moderate, uh, there's an opportunity for small groups of parishioners to reconnect safely out of doors where the ventilation is better. And so we're uh, opening the possibility of some Park and Garden Parishioners Get-Togethers, uh, PGPG for short. Uh, and this is not big parties and elaborate menus and all that kind of thing that St. John's does so well. We're talking about something low-key, socially distanced, lawn chairs in a circle, uh, in your garden or in a park, 40 minutes, an opportunity for parishioners uh, to catch up with each other, to reconnect with each other, to share experiences and thoughts with each other and with your priest, because I hope to be uh, part of them also. And so what we're looking for is some parishioners who are interested in inviting or helping us convene 
uh, these small gatherings of maybe eight to 15 people um, and to be uh, kind of the host. Um, but as I say, this is not a huge commitment of resources or time, but it's a real opportunity for us to reconnect safely uh, in, in, in pleasant temperatures. I'm going to be away for a few days this week, uh, but you could, if you're interested, uh, want to be, think about this, uh, give your name to the church office or contact David Spiel um, on his email. Third, um, next Sunday is Sunday after Michaelmas, and you know our custom is, of course, to do it up uh, royally with uh, trumpets and uh, uh, timpani and incense and, and all kinds of um, over-the-top uh, ceremonial. Uh, we won't be able to do all of that this year. Uh, we can't have brass instruments because spit is involved, uh, but we can have strings. And so there'll be strings uh, playing some familiar Michaelmas uh, uh, music uh, at 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock on those services. Uh, finally, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we're doing a special collection of diapers and diaper wipes for Shelter from the Rain, a wonderful ministry uh, uh, in support of single mothers and their children, and I hope you'll consider uh, supporting them. You can, uh, the information is available in our publicity, and you can order things online from Amazon and have all the delivery looked after. From today's epistle in the third chapter um, of Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So what happens when you're driving down the road and a funeral procession uh, comes your way? Uh, you know, if you're a jerk, you'll keep on driving and beep your horn if anyone slows you down because, of course, what you are doing is supremely important and urgent. But if you've got decent manners, you will pull over and wait that one or two minutes while the procession passes. And if you fear God, you will remember that you too are immortal and you will offer up the prayer of faith and hope and of charity. So those are the possibilities for us. What's unthinkable for us is, of course, is that we would stop the procession, tell people stop crying, bring out the coffin, pry up the lid, and tell the dead man to get up. That's precisely what happened when Jesus and his disciples came to the little town of Nain in the course of his ministry journeys. They ran into a funeral procession coming out the town, a young man being carried to his grave, the only son of a widow which means for her, not only the grief of loss, but at that time and place, a future of loneliness and poverty. And Jesus is moved with compassion when he sees her. And then he takes command. He does the unthinkable. He gets in front of that procession. He brings it to a halt. He tells her not to weep. He puts his hand on the beer, a strict taboo in a Jewish culture, and he tells the young man, the dead corpse, arise. And the young man gets up, and Jesus restores him to his mother. And those tears of sorrow turned into tears of joy. That sad funeral procession turned into a ticker tape victory parade. And the crowd is in no, no doubt what they've just witnessed. They testify that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited his people, which is to say that in the person of Jesus, they perceive that the great God and creator of all things is not far away and remote and uninterested. He has visited his people. He has come near. He's not absent, but present. He's powerfully at work in compassion and in command, turning sorrow into joy death into life. Well, that's what happens when Jesus comes to town. When Jesus comes to town, God comes to town. God visits his people. The infinite God makes himself present within the finite context 
All his grace and power to save and bless is made available to us in Christ. It, it comes near. It's not at a distance. It's close at hand. And that's why it's critical for us that we not keep Christ at a distance. Christ at a distance is of no use whatsoever. No, you need Christ up close and personal. You need him as close as you can get him. And that's why Paul, in today's epistle lesson, has this prayer for the Christians of Ephesus, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You don't get much more up close and personal than that. So let's, let's, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That tells us um, a couple of things that are important. It says that he dwells in us by faith, which is to say that when you believe in Christ and in the gospel, you're not only believing certain things about him, but you're also receiving him. Right? You're not just... You're not just um, uh, checking some boxes on a list of things you believe to be true, you're actually receiving the one of whom they are true. And you're receiving him into your heart, into the inmost core of your personality, into the control room of your soul, because the heart in biblical language is not only the seat of feeling, but of knowing, and judging, and deciding so when we believe in Christ and in the gospel, Christ doesn't remain at a distance. He walks in the front door, and he takes up permanent residence in the very core of our personality, and he does so in full command, in full compassion, as Lord and Savior. And when he does so, Paul says, we're going to become rooted, so rooted and grounded in love that we're going to be able to comprehend what is in fact beyond comprehension, the height, the breadth, the length, the depth of the love of Christ. We'll be able to know the love of Christ, which passes knowing, will be filled with all the fullness of God. What does it mean to say we'll be able to comprehend the height, the breadth, the length, the depth? I think about that hymn, which is, you can uh, listen to it on, on, uh, on, on, uh, online. It was sung for this morning by the choir. Oh, love how deep, how broad, how high, how passing thought and fantasy that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal sake. But of course, that's just the beginning, and the hymn goes on to talk about all that Christ has done for us, above all, how he died for us. And that's, I think, I always think of when, when Paul talks about the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, in line with a long tradition, I take that to be a way of talking about the love of God revealed to us on the cross. It's a love so broad that it embraces every kind of human being without um, uh, discrimination based on race or culture or sex. Every kind of human being, every kind of sinner in forgiveness, not in judgment. It's a love so long that it lasts through all time and into eternity and will never let us down. It's a love so deep that death and hell, hell itself cannot separate us from it. It's a love so high that it brings us all the way to heaven, all the way to God's throne as beloved children of the Heavenly Father. Which is to say, that when Christ dwells in our hearts by faith, we are filled with all the fullness of God. God visits his people. God not absent but present, not remote but near, not outside but inside, turning death into life and sorrow into joy. That's what happens when Christ dwells in our hearts by faith. Now, the Christians that Paul is writing to and praying for well, they're already believers. He's not talking about them coming to belief for the first time. Christ is already dwell, indwelling their hearts by faith. And if we're believers, he's already indwelling our hearts by faith too. But faith is a matter of degrees. It's not all or nothing. Like the father of the epileptic boy, 
We may cry out, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. We both believe and we don't believe. And what Paul is showing us is that we might pray that our faith and our love for Christ might grow, that we might receive Christ more fully, more deeply, more transformatively. So let me make a rather obvious practical point. Christ can't dwell in your hearts by faith if you've locked the front door. Christ can't dwell in your hearts by faith if you let him in the front door but keep him in the front parlor uh, drinking tea out of the best teacups. He can't dwell in your hearts by faith if you're trying to maintain control of the relationship. He can't dwell in your hearts by faith on those terms because he is the Lord. And when he comes into your heart and into your life, he comes as Lord. And if you're trying to keep control of your life, your thoughts, your decisions, your feelings, your possessions, then you're keeping him out. He can't dwell in your hearts by faith if you don't give him total command of what you think, of what you decide, of what you do, about your body, about your mind, about your time, about your energy, and yes, in stewardship season, your wallet. To quote another classic hymn, were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, loved so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. We all have many fears, anxieties, worries, problems, concerns, and needs. But you know what your greatest need is? Your number one need is for the indwelling of Christ in your hearts by faith, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, that's what we pray for when we come to the altar in the Holy Communion. We pray that he may dwell in us and we in him. And you might think, oh, that's way too much to ask for. How can I ask for this? How is it even thinkable that Christ might dwell in my heart by faith, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, Paul doesn't think it's unthinkable. Paul doesn't think it's too much to ask for. He tells us, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According, he says, to the power that worketh in us, according to that infinite power that turns death into life, sorrow into joy great Anglican divine of the last century, Austin Ferrer. He was the priest of C.S. Lewis, an Oxford Don, theologian and preacher. He put it this way, we do not come to God for a little help, a little support to our own good intentions. We come to him for resurrection. God will not be asked for little. He will be asked for all. Ask him for all. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thine own, own have we given thee. Amen. Almighty God, Father Lord of all mercies, mercies we, we, thine unworthy servants, servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us, to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and evermore. Amen.